happy Saturday. So I have had a busy day. I went to high fitness this morning and then I started my high fitness training, which is a virtual training all day today. And I started that at 9.30, right when I got home from my high fitness class. So we are on a break right now. So I'm just eating lunch really quick. This is a ham and cheese salad with some romaine lettuce. And here, let me show you more. So romaine lettuce, some ham, cheese, tomatoes, and cucumbers. It's big, it looks delicious. I'm also having a little piece of homemade sourdough bread. And this is the dressing I'm using. I don't often use dressing on my salad, to be honest. I don't really like wet lettuce, but this is sugar-free, it's really yummy, organic, and it's got a little spicy kick to it. I really like it. Oh, and I just got this at Target. Looking good. Hi, Po. Hi, hi, hi. Po. Po. We are in the canyon right now going for a walk. And I've got Ray and Poe with me. Eric's at home because he kind of has an injured foot, so he wasn't pulling too well. So, anyway, here we are in the canyon. It feels so nice outside. So nice. Especially since I was in my basement all morning with uh, that training I had going on. So anyway, it feels really nice to be inside. It's not too hot. Obviously a lot of people here, but anyway. Okay guys, that was really hard, taking a dog and a baby by myself to go for a walk in the canyon. I think it was worth it, but Poe cried the whole way there and Ray cried the whole way back. So my head is like, bah! And Ray is so crabby right now. I think she just needs to go to bed. She's teething, definitely teething. I caved and look what I gave her. What do you think about that popsicle? <laughs> look, her teeth hurt. I can see a tooth over here coming in and it doesn't look pleasant. So I'm sure the popsicle tastes great to her. All she wants is milk. And I gave her a cliff bar, like a, a Z bar, the iced oatmeal cookie, I think, is her favorite one. They're not bad. They're not great, but they're a pretty good option for kids, and she loves them. She would eat tons if she could. She would eat two or three of them, but I only gave her one. I tried to give her, like, a bagel, some soup, so I'm gonna let her eat a little bit more. I'm gonna let her eat a little bit more of this popsicle. We're gonna get some milk, PJs, and she's going to bed. Do you want to watch yourself eat? She loves watching herself. Mm. Yum, yum. Yeah. Say night night, everyone. I'm going to bed. Hey guys. So it's Sunday, the next day. And I think I may have taken my high fitness training and the whole day yesterday a little too hard because I woke up with a sore throat this morning and it still hurts. I've been just... I've had cough drops in my mouth all day because it's just what's helping it to feel a little bit better. But Ray is napping, so I am taking this time to just chill here in bed. Eric is at church. We aren't going to church because my sore throat. So I am reading this book. And if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know I love the Moms on Call method. I did their method when Ray was a newborn and I got their six to 15 month old book and that one was great as well. It just really helped me keep Ray on a schedule and kind of understand all of her developmental, all of the developmental stages that they go through. However, now that she's a toddler officially, she's 16 months. I don't even know when they officially become toddlers. If you can let me know when you think they become a toddler in the comments below, that'd be great. I hear 12 months, I hear 15 months, I hear 18 months, I don't know. But either way, she's a toddler, right? 
She's almost walking. Not quite yet, but so close. I knew she wouldn't walk for a while just based off of her chill personality. And I haven't done an update on her in forever because I really was just thinking, I'll just wait until she walks and then we'll do an update. You guys, it's taking forever for her to walk. But one thing that's going on with her lately is she is starting to throw tantrums, you guys. And I'm just staring at her like, who the heck are you? Because if you remember, if you've been around for a while, she was the most chill, mellow kid. And before she could crawl around, she would just sit or lay down with three or four toys and be completely content. And now she's all over the place and she <laughs> uses, I mean, I love it. It's really cute to watch, but she uses her little walker and if she can't get around something with her walker, she instantly has a meltdown. Like it's just frustration. She will just start crying and I'm just like, what the heck, who are you? And if she doesn't get what she wants immediately, she just gets mad. So I'm reading this book front to back because I need to figure out how to best facilitate an environment here at home that can help her work through the challenges that come with being a toddler. And it's for her sake and my sake and Eric's sake because Eric and I are both looking at her sometimes like, whoa, okay, is this, is this how you're going to be acting? Because we, we don't know what to do. Anyway, overall, it's been really fun just watching her turn into a crazy little kid. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also been shocking. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have kids, if your kids have like flipped a switch one day when they became toddlers or whatever. And I don't know when the terrible twos start, if they start right at two years old, but we've witnessed what I would call terrible twos. So yeah, if you could give me any tips as well down below, any resources of how to communicate with toddlers and just help them thrive, that would be amazing. I don't think I told you guys that I cut my hair. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it, but I cut my hair and I just cut it the same length and style that I had it cut in May and it feels so nice to have short hair again. I don't know, I just feel more like myself with short hair and anyway, it just feels good. But I always struggle figuring out how to curl my hair when it's short, like I have to get into the groove again of curling short hair. It's just a whole nother ball game when you're curling short hair versus longer hair. Anyway, I wanted to take a second here and just chat with you guys about my thoughts about my YouTube channel. For those of you who've been following us for a while or you've stumbled across some of my videos, you probably know that I started this YouTube channel as a way to document our IVF journey, I guess, our infertility struggles, and it was really to connect with other people so I didn't feel so alone, so we didn't feel so alone, I guess you could say. Because back then at that time, Eric was a little more involved with my YouTube channel than he is now, not that he doesn't necessarily want to be it's just i've been talking more about things that are specific to my life solely like my fitness journey and all that jazz so even though we are done with ivf for the moment we have our baby she's 16 months old it's been great i still want to make content that is relevant and helpful for my community and i feel like most of my community they're either going through IVF or they've been through IVF and now they're maybe new moms. I don't know. I can tell some general demographics when I look at my analytics, but I don't know how many people are still like going through IVF and still need support that way or how many people want new mom support or you know tips and I also like to talk a lot about not just my fitness journey, but my life as a working mom. And I don't know how many people out there are that interested in that either. When I was nursing, right, I felt like that was more applicable because it was helpful to show people how I navigated nursing, breastfeeding, while also being a working mom and traveling and all that stuff. So even though I am very passionate about fitness, I always have been, I'm an exercise science major and I am still on this journey to losing the IVF weight before we do IVF yet again and hopefully get pregnant with our second baby. 
not making an announcement right now it's just it's in our future but we're just not exactly sure when anyway what i'm saying is even though i am still you know on this fitness journey a 90 day fitness journey the 90 days won't be up until i think i have another month left i'm still gonna work on that but i don't think i'm gonna do these weekly check-ins of this 90 day fitness journey anymore I will mention it when it's applicable, but I really think I just wanna focus my channel more on supporting the IVF and infertility community. I'm just gonna base my content more on the kinds of questions I'm getting from my Instagram, which are usually related to IVF and the Moms on Cult book that I always talk about, which is the sleep training method that we use for Ray and like the overall schedule and everything that we do for Ray. But I would love to hear if you guys have any specific recommendations for videos. Would love to hear your guys' feedback there. I am so passionate about sharing my experience with infertility and my support for the infertility community. I'm very passionate about helping people navigate IVF and just not feel alone through that process. So over the next month or so, you'll start seeing some different videos coming out of content that is geared towards helping and supporting that community. And I have done some live videos lately, this throughout the summer, and I wanted to do them every Thursday night, and then it was like every other Thursday night, and then now it's like, I, I think I could do it once a month, because you know, I am a working mom, I work full time, and I even do some side projects here and there, and I just have to, I have to be cognizant of my time and what I actually can do, not just what I would like to do. If it were up to me, I had all the time in the world, I would dedicate it more to YouTube, but YouTube is just not a good income for me. You do make a little bit of money from AdSense, but I don't do sponsorships because I don't feel like I have the time to devote to sponsorships. and those sponsorships that have been thrown my way are just not anything that I would ever feel comfortable being paid to tell you guys about because it's just not something that I truly like am passionate about or be believe in. I mean, some of it's not even like a bad product. It's just not something I'm passionate about. So I don't want to come off like inauthentic. Anywho, so that is where I'm at right now. I, again, would love to hear some feedback from you guys. I mean, the community is what YouTube is all about, I feel. I love that I can talk to you guys and the support I've received through my YouTube channel has been amazing, as well as over on my Instagram. I've really appreciated the community we've built. So please, please don't hesitate to give me your feedback in the comments below. And you guys, I never thought I would get this close to 10,000 followers. I'm at like 91 or 92 hundred and we're so close and I'm like we could probably get there by the end of the year that would be so awesome to have a community of 10,000 people like coming together on common ground and I can be a voice for that community I just feel like it's super special so anyway thank you so much to those of you who have already subscribed if you haven't already subscribed please hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications and i will catch you guys in my next video bye